When bears and humans come into contact, sometimes things go well, sometimes they do not. When there's conflict between bears and humans, it's of special interest to Jack Hopkins, a professor of wildlife biology at Unity College. He spent the first half of the year in Slovenia doing research on human-bear conflicts. Slovenia has more bears per square mile than just about any country in the world. So it was the ideal place for Hopkins to explore a subject that has long fascinated him. In college, Jack Hopkins worked for the U.S. Forest Service. He collected scat and tracks from grizzly bears next to Yellowstone National Park. It was the first opportunity he had to study bears, and he was hooked. Bears are a really good model species for me. Um, they're highly intelligent, right? Um, they live really in sort of the human dimension, right? Um, and they often are, they interact with people. They cause conflicts. What Hopkins was especially focused on in Slovenia is what happens when humans and bears come into conflict. He brings to the subject a scientist's focus and rigor. This project was primarily devoted to using tons of different data sets, genetics, isotopes, spatial data from GPS collars, all this information to figure out, well, what is it? What are the real factors that lead to an animal becoming an animal that that is in conflict with people. Hopkins went to Slovenia to do research on what bears have eaten, which sheds light on the decisions bears make when foraging. Slovenia was a good place to conduct the research because it does something quite unusual. It feeds corn to bears on a broad scale so that hunters can then help manage the population. So it's a very small country. It's about the fifth size of Maine, and they have over 500 brown bears, and there's two million people in that space. So bears and people are coming in contact with each other all the time. There's corn feeders all over the landscape. Uh, they've been feeding bears there for a really long time and they wanna understand how important corn is to the diets of bears. And they wanna know if certain bears that get more corn or less corn are involved in more or less conflict. We've all seen the photos, a bear on a car, at a campsite, in a dumpster, with a garbage bag, and not just on a car, but in a car. In all of these cases, the bears were looking for human food. And among the questions Hopkins is trying to answer, exactly why are the bears acting as they do? And what is the best response to minimize potentially dangerous encounters with humans? There are people who are gonna to listen to this conversation and they're gonna find it very interesting, but they're gonna say, under no circumstances should humans be feeding bears. They shouldn't be feeding them corn in Slovenia. They shouldn't be feeding them donuts in Maine. What would you say to those folks? As a scientist, I'm interested in knowing about the impact of anthropogenic food on wildlife, and in specific bears. So I wanna know how it affects their health and their reproductive status and their survival. Those things are really important to me as a scientist. I teach my kids never to feed any wildlife. I think it's safe to say everybody is interested in bears. Most people like bears, but you, have an interest and an affection for bears that is on a whole different level. What is it that really fascinates you about bears? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I'm, I'm a bear guy. Their responses to the way that the environment changes are wildly different. That's super interesting to an ecologist. But bears remind me a lot of my, um, myself. I see bears fool around with their cubs, and it reminds me a lot of me wrestling around on the floor with my little son. You were focused on brown bears in Slovenia. Is the behavior of brown bears in Slovenia pretty similar to black bears in Maine? Brown bears and black bears are really different. You know, black bears evolved in the forest and brown bears evolved out on the open plains. They do things very differently. They forage differently. They make decisions differently. Have you ever had a close run in with a bear? Oh yeah, plenty of times. Oh yeah, um, grizzlies and black bears. I've been bluff charged um, many times. They kind of run at you huffing, clapping their jaws together. Um, that's happened to me dozens of times, for sure. You, you say that kind of matter-of-factly. It yeah, sounds like that must I, be pretty terrifying. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty terrifying um, pretty much every time. It's just when you, when you study the animal and you come in contact with it enough, you're going to get that kind of response. And it's, it's not one that you it's always scary at the moment, but then afterwards you know that that animal was just telling you, hey, you better back off. 
Have you had an encounter where you really thought your life was in danger? I've never um, been attacked, but pretty much every time you have that sort of fight or flight response, and I can tell you that I've done both. Now, after we did that interview, Jack Hopkins sent me an email to clarify his comments about running to and from bears. He said, you can view from a safe distance, but you should never approach or feed a bear. Now, while researching and trapping bears, he has gotten too close. He once ran at a grizzly bear when he was startled, and he once ran away to warn friends about a bear down the trail that never saw him. So he has had close encounters. You do always wonder, what do you, what do, you do in that situation? Yeah. You can find the full clarification Jack Hopkins sent us on our website. It's well worth reading if you are ever likely to come into contact with bears.